Hello and welcome my friends back to my channel. <laughs> we are doing Strength in the Struggle. Um, it is a Bible study. I have it linked in the description box below if you want to order your copy. I ordered it off Amazon and it's an Amazon link. I do earn a little commission every time you purchase from an Amazon link on my channel. That's just a little FTC disclaimer that we're supposed to let you know. But we are on week 8. This is a 10 week study, so we are almost towards the end. We will come back and discuss our answers together on Friday. You're welcome to join us if you'd like. So we're going to start with lesson 8, the memory verse. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. It's Philippians 4, 6-7. Historical Context Philippians is a letter written by the Apostle Paul to the Philippian Church. The city of Philippi was located in Macedonia, present northeastern Greece. And it was there that Paul first established a church in modern-day Europe. Acts 16, 6 40. Paul wrote this letter while imprisoned in Rome around 61 to 62 AD to thank the Philippian believers for their continued support and encourage them in living out their faith. The first question is read Acts 16, 25 through 40. What stands out to you about Paul and Silas? What Paul and Silas did while imprisoned in Philippi? What was their focus? Bible context. Philippians is a short four-chapter episode found in the New Testament after Paul's letter to the Ephesians and before his letter to Colossians. Philippians is primarily a letter of thanks and encouragement. At the beginning of the epistle, Paul opens with a greeting and a prayer. Then he shares about his imprisonment, which led him to encourage the believers to live out their faith and nature in Christ. Oh, and mature in Christ, sorry. In the second half of this letter, he addresses the true gospel and source of righteousness. Then he closes with more encouragement and thanksgiving, which is the section we will be focusing on. Read Philippians 4, 4 through 13. Question number two. Paul emphasizes the importance of rejoicing in verse four. What do the following verses reveal about our reason in rejoicing and how we can maintain a joyful attitude? Question number three. List of things Paul instructs believers to think about. What does he say will happen if we think accordingly? Question number four. In verses 10 through 12, what did Paul say he learned to do? What is the secret or the key to learning this? And question number five. What does this teach you about contentment and how does that encourage you to your struggles with anxiety and fear? Circumstantial happiness versus spiritual contentment. Spend time with loved ones, experience new things, find work and hobbies you enjoy, follow your dreams, smile, and laugh more. The world offers a lot of advice on how to live a joyful life. These things can make us happier, but they cannot guarantee us lasting contentment. Loved ones move or pass away. We aren't always able to do the things we enjoy, and life goals get derailed. Sometimes we go through the seasons where there is little circumstantial, circumstantially that makes us smile or laugh. Paul, on the other hand, was unjustly imprisoned for preaching the gospel and had nearly all of his freedom stripped from him, and yet he learned to be content in every circumstance, even in times of hunger and physical need. What was the secret? Jesus. Something that has been consistent that we've read about Paul is that even through intense hold on got turn the page intense hardship and imprisonment his focus remained the same his eyes were always fixed on Christ and he had wholeheartedly hope in the gospel when we continually preach the gospel to ourselves and seek Jesus through his word and prayer we are strengthened by Christ and our joy increases Believers are not dependent upon circumstances for contentment. Whatever is happening in our lives, we can always rejoice in the gospel 
and the countless blessings we experience because of what Christ has accomplished for us. Our joy and contentment is found in the certainty that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8, 38-39 Going back to our memory verse, let's take a moment and dive a little deeper into our memory verse. Question number six. How does Paul direct believers to respond to anxiety? And how does this relate to Jesus' teaching in Matthew 6, 25-34? Question number seven. What does God promise will happen if we follow these commands? Jesus is our peace. Instead of being anxious, we are to pray humbly and earnestly about what we need and give thanks to God for what we have. When we do this, our hearts and minds will be guarded by God's transcending peace in Christ. Verse 6 through 7. Likewise, we are to continually thank God, think godly thoughts, and follow the teachings of the Bible. As a result, the God of peace himself will be with us. Verse 8 through 9. But isn't God always with believers? To put it simply, yes. If you believe in Christ's death and resurrection and have turned from your old ways of living to follow Him alone, you have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. It's Ephesians 1, 13-14 You are positionally at peace with God, declared righteous through Christ, and are forgiven of all your sins. Romans 5, 11. We experience the fullness of His grace when we live in light of His reality. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. John 14, 27. In other words, his all-surpassing peace should impact our anxieties and fears. God is teaching us to pray, give thanks, think about what's true, and live according to his teachings. When we do those things, we will experience a peace unlike anything the world can offer. Peace is always available to those who are at peace with the God of peace. It's time for reflection. Let's take a moment to reflect on what we just studied. Question number eight. How have your beliefs about joy, contentment, and peace changed after studying this passage? Question number nine. What does... What ways do you need Jesus to guard your heart and mind? Now it's time for application. Now that we better understand the context and meaning of our memory verse, let's apply what we learn to our own lives. Question number 10. What reasons do you have to rejoice that are independent from your circumstances? Question number 11. How will you... Prioritize praise, prayer, and gratitude to your day-to-day life. Question number 12 is in two parts. The first part is, are you in control of your thoughts? How would you describe your thought life? And the second part is, Philippians 4, 8-9 closely relates to 2 Corinthians 10, 5. How is God equipping you to replace anxious thoughts with godly thoughts? And what steps will you take to gain control? See also Galatians 5, 22 through 23, 2 Timothy 1, 7, and 1 Peter 1, 13. The last question, do you trust that Christ can strengthen and teach you to be content in all circumstances? And is there a step you need to take by faith? And then in your prayer time this week, take a moment to pray about what you studied. Praise God for who he is. Thank him for what he brought taught you in this lesson. Confess any sins that come to mind and trust that you are forgiven in Christ. Then ask him to help you apply what you learned in your life to your thought and action. Feel free to write that prayer below. And that is it, my friends. I will see you Friday for our discussion. Have a great day. Bye.